If you have your Bibles, this is going to be on the board. It's Luke 4, 15, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 15, verse 1. We're going to talk about soul winning tonight. The man that wins souls is wise. And I think every Christian should know how to win someone to Christ. Now, it's the Holy Spirit that converts them. It's the Holy Spirit that uh, convicts them of sin. But we, as ambassadors, have our part in sharing the gospel with them. So let's begin to read in Luke chapter 15. It's up on the board, starting with verse 1. There we go. Amplified. Yeah, it's amplified. Okay. Now the tax collectors and notorious and especially wicked sinners were all coming near to Jesus to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes kept muttering and indignantly complaining, saying, This man accepts and receives and welcomes preeminently wicked sinners and eats with them. How disgusting that is. Someone says, I don't believe the Lord can love me because I'm a sinner. Now, isn't that amazing? And that's what we read in the scriptures. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if you are a sinner, then you qualify to be saved. Isn't that amazing? Now, as far as I know, everybody in here tonight is saved. If you're not, after this uh, teaching, then uh, do come up and we'll introduce you to Christ. But I believe every Christian should be a soul winner. And I want to share with you tonight uh, how you can be. Now, <coughs> the relig religious people, uh, you can see in the scriptures here, get all bent out of shape. And sometimes people uh, don't understand uh, when you're trying to win somebody to the Lord. And, uh, but Jesus makes it very clear, and he gives us an example. In verse, uh, he gives a parable. In verse 3, he says, So he told them this parable. Then, then verse 4, What man of you, if he has a hundred sheep and should lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, desert, and go after the one that is lost until he is found. And when he is found, he lays it on his own shoulders, rejoicing. And when he gets home, he summons together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep which was lost. Thus, I'll tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one especially wicked person who repents, changes his mind, and that's what repentance is. You're going, you're going this way, you turn 180 degree, and you go this way, uh, the way of the Lord. And you don't go the way of the world no more, but you go the way of the Lord, and that's what true repentance is. And he goes on and says, his mind, a horror in his error and misdeeds, and determines to enter upon a better course of life than over 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. So we see this example that Jesus set. You got 100 sheep, one is lost, you leave the 99 and you go and you search out uh, the, the one that is lost. When I look back on my own conversion, and uh, it, it, it's really something how God has dealt with me. I never had anybody come up and say, uh, uh, Mr. Tilden, did you know you were lost? The Holy Spirit had just worked with me. And uh, hearing a little bit here and a little bit there, all I knew is I was sitting in a Baptist church one day, and the Holy Spirit came upon me and convicted me of sin. And they didn't even have an invitation. I just got up and walked down the aisle, looked at the preacher. He looked at me. He said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I want to get saved. And usually, you know, in the Baptist church, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you don't, you know, you stay in that with that, those categories and you move accordingly. But I don't know. I, I, I got up and, man, I tell you what, I gave my life to Christ. And I became a changed man. I, I cannot e explain it. 
other than I fell in love with Jesus, and I instantly, when I went back to work, in fact, the week before I went to church, I was out drinking with the guys, partying, and I was married. But when I, went, I got saved that Sunday, I went back to where I worked at the air base, and I started witnessing and sharing, people, sharing with the people that I went out and got drunk with last week, and they started getting saved. And uh, I just share the Lord. I share my experience. And, uh, and, and, and every one of them that I shared over a period of a year there, uh, they, uh, they accepted Jesus. Everybody and Susan and my family is saved because uh, Susan and me were soul winners in our family, and we prayed for them. And every one of them, as far as I know right now, all of them, sisters, brothers, cousins, my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all of them, they're all saved because Susan and me walk the talk and talk the walk, and we share uh, Christ with people, and we love people. If you're going to be a soul winner, you've got to love people. You can't be mechanically doing it, you know. And so it's been a real blessing over the years to, to really uh, win people. First thing I want to put up on the board, and you have uh, your plan of salvation there, so let's look at that and put uh, Romans 3.23. Let's go over some of these scriptures. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Everybody there? Let's start reading that scripture, Romans 3.23. Since all have sinned and are fallen short of the honor and glory which God bestowed and received. Now, you know, I was an evangelist in the Baptist church for 15 years, and I was pretty good in quoting that scriptures. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's so true. But, you know, if, we're all, if you're a Christian, raise your hands. Are you? I'm talking to Christians. Okay. So you're on this side of the cross. You've been justified, sanctified, made holy by God. You're a child of God. You're, the, you're a priesthood. Uh, you're God's uh, uh, children. You're heirs of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. And so when you, when you teach and preach the saints of God, you, you preach on this side of the cross. But if all of y'all were sinners, there'd be fire coming out of my mouth tonight. Every one of you have sinned, and you know you have sinned. You've lied, you've cheated, you've committed adultery. You're going to hell if you don't repent. How would you like to have that every night preached to you? Some of you don't know what, you don't know what to do with that, do you? But you don't do the saints of God that way. Why? Because they are on this side of the cross. They've been delivered out of, of the kingdom of darkness and placed over here into the kingdom of the Son of God, and now they're children of God, heirs of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ, made righteous with the righteousness of God. Have you got that? Now we can rejoice on that. Amen? We can rejoice on that. So basically I'm preaching on this side of the cross. But you're going to meet people that are lost and, and, and separated from God, and um, this, this you need to know. They may, be, they may be mortally good people, but they lost. They're sinners, and you've got to know that. In fact, I've met some good moral sinners because we're sinners by nature. We, we were born sinners, okay? How many has ever met people that really are good people, and yet they don't know the Lord? How many? Know, look at the hands. Sure. But they, they still lost. They, they've got to be saved. And uh, someone says, well, I don't think I've really sinned. And, you know, that's where the Ten Commandments comes in. All you've got to say, uh, have you ever told a lie? All right, let's just suppose all of you all are, are sinners. And I say, okay, none of you think you're sinners? Has anybody in here ever told a lie? Raise your hand. Look at it, 100%. If you didn't raise your hand, you just lied. <laughs> so that means you're a sinner. That means you're a sinner. Yeah. And so, therefore, you need to repent and get saved. 
Now, Jesus came not to make, a, make us a bunch of religious uh, folks, but he came to save us where we can have a relationship with God and also with him and to walk with him daily. I have, I talk with some Christians and they don't know anything about fellowshipping with God 24-7. I mean, I fellowship with God 24-7. Every day, I fellowship with God. I mean, there's something going on between God and me in my spirit every day. I'm talking with him. He's talking with me every day, 24-7. That's powerful. Believe me, the, when, when my blood pressure went up to 220, over 110, how many believe I was communicating with God? Huh? I said, Lord, what's going on here? You know? And uh, I thank God that he gave me the wisdom to do what I did do. So we see all have sinned and come short of the, of the glory of God. And some people will argue with you about that. But all you got to do is just simply say, have you ever told a lie? <coughs> and if they tell you they haven't, you can tell them you just told a lie. Because I've never met anybody that never told a lie. I remember when I was a young boy. How many had a cookie jar at home? See, I never bothered the cookie jar. It was always my sister. And I got cookies, you know, coming down my chin. Oh, it wasn't me, Mama. It was, it was Betty, my sister. And I'm chewing cookies. Why is it sometimes, how many has ever told a lie and you said, why did I say, why did I do that? No, see your hands. Why did I do that? Lord, forgive me, I didn't mean to do that. So, so I thank God that as Christians, we don't have to sin, but if we do, that little word if, 1 John 1, 9, remember that? God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If, if we confess it and then receive it. So you, people are going to try to argue with you and say, well, you know, I'm, then they're going to start comparing themselves. Well, I don't think I'm as bad as my neighbor. <laughs> I've heard that many a time. I don't think I'm as bad as so-and-so, you know. That's not the point. If you're not saved, then you're lost, and you need to get saved. So you need to keep that in mind when you're dealing with people. Now, <clears throat> when you see Romans 23, let's turn to Romans 5.12. 5.12, Romans 5.12. It's up on the board. Therefore, as sin came into the world, how? Through one man. And who is that one man? Adam. <coughs> and death as a result of sin. Some people say, well, why do we die? Because... Death came into the world through the one man, Adam. That's why we, we have to, these physical bodies have to die. And death as a result of sin. So death spread to all men, no one being able to stop it or to escape its power because all men have sinned. That's your daddy, that's your mama, that's your next door neighbor, that's the president, that's the vice president, that's the bishop, that's the elder, that's the deacon, that's the pastor, that's whoever. They all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the good news is Christ came to save the sinner. What a, what a message we have. I like the Hebrew writer, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So great a salvation. What a salvation we have. So we see Romans 5, 12. How did, sinner, how did sin enter into the world? By one man, Adam. And how did death come in? Death became because of the result of that one man's sin. So you need to remember that now when you're dealing with people. Because they think, well, you know, I, I, I haven't sinned. Listen. You could be born and not break one of the commandments of God. And you're, you have sinned. Why? Because you inherit that sin 
from Adam. It came down from Adam. You're born to sin. I know we had the little baby. Oh, he's the beautifulest baby I ever seen in my life. Oh, he's wonderful. Wonderful. You look at him. You see, he looks like his daddy, don't he? You think he looks like his daddy? Look at him. Who said he looked like the mama? Looked like his daddy. That child's a sinner. You tee, you tee the child off. Huh? He'll let you know in a minute. His diaper gets messed up. He'll let you know in a minute. Isn't that right? So that child has inherited Adam's sin, and as they grow up and move into accountability, God will work. You, share, you live before that child, and that child at some point will give its life to the Lord. All right, look at uh, Romans... Uh, Romans 6, 23 on the board. I love this one, especially that last part. <coughs> well, what is the wages of sin? It says, for the wages which sin pays is death. So that there is a wage, and that, it, that wage is death. Spiritual death and eternal death. But the bountiful free gift of God is eternal life through and in union with Jesus Christ our Lord. So when you accept Christ as your personal Savior, then you receive eternal life because he is eternal life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Now, I know you'll meet some people out there, they think people are saved because they have their name written on some church roll. That has nothing to do with your salvation whatsoever. Every person has to be born again by the Spirit of God, has to repent and receive Christ as their personal Savior. The Bible says, If I will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. So, I don't care how good somebody thinks they may be, or how much they've given to the poor, or how much they have done this, and how much they've done that. If they have not been born again, they are lost. And the, and the bad news is, if they die, they would go to a burning hell. So, remember, we didn't write the book, we just preach it. Remember that. And sometimes, you know, you have to tell people that, just right out in front, say, you know, if that's your choice, but I tell you what your destiny is. I tell you, if you don't repent, where you're going, and that doesn't mean God don't love you. That don't mean I don't love you. But if you don't repent, then you're going to die, and you're going to go to hell. And that's not God's will. The Bible says it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all should come to repentance. So remember that. So there's wages, but thank God for the gift of God. Notice, salvation is a gift. You don't work for a gift. A gift is given to you, and you receive it. That's why I love him so much. You know, when I think of the Lord and what he's done for me, you know, those bars that they put on his head, you know, they, those things were two inches, three inches, and they just pushed those things out on his brow, and the blood came out of his head, dripping down. And those nails, you know, the nails didn't go through his hands now. They went right through his wrists, right through there. That's where the nails went. Remember that. Right through there, the Roman soldier knew exactly where to put that nail when they crucified somebody. Right through that wrist, right there. And nailed to Christ to the cross, right there. And then the one nail through his, uh, his two uh, feet. I mean, you know, we say, well, Jesus died for me, and... and, and and I know that, and that's really bad, but he suffered for me. When you look at the suffering that he, he went through on that cross for six hours, and all that he suffered, and for me not to serve him, I need a spanking. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, when you think about what he went through for me, for you, for each and every one of you, I'm going to be the best servant I can be for him. I want to say no to the world and yes to God. 
whatever he wants me to do, I'm, 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 I'm going to do it. And I've done it for 80, not 80 years. So I haven't been saved that long. I got saved when I was 26. But whatever he asks me to do, I do it, not grudgingly. Oh, I've got to go to church this morning. Tell them I'm sick. When you see and understand the suffering that he went through for you and for me, and for me not to serve him, wow. No, I serve him with gladness. I serve him because I love him with all my heart, so mind, and strength. And I've walked with him now for 54, I think, years, and he's never deserted me. He's seen me through every crisis and every situation that I've ever been in. He has been loyal to me, and I've tried to be loyal to him. Turn, if you will, to 1 first, first John, first John 3. Over to 1 John 3 on the board, verse 1. This is a powerful, powerful verse of Scripture to let people know just how much the Lord really, really loves them. It's up on the board. Well, that's a powerful verse of Scripture. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given, shown, bestowed on us, that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. The reason that the world does not know or recognize or acknowledge us is that it does not know and recognize and acknowledge Him. Beloved, verse 2, we are even here and now, right now, God's children. It is not yet disclosed or made clear what we shall be hereafter, but we know that when he comes and is manifested, we shall, as God's children, resemble and be like him, for he shall, we shall see him just as he really is. Now notice verse 3, and everyone who has this hope resting on him cleanses, purifies himself, just as he is pure, chaste, undefiled, and guiltless. Now, when we come to the Lord, there is a sanctifying work that God does in us, and he declares us sanctified, he declares us holy, he declares us undefiled, he declares us children of God. But on the other side of sanctification... Like when I first got saved, I was witnessing, but I was still drinking booze and smoking and, and lying once in a while. You understand what I'm saying? And, and in one year, God began to work on me. He said, now, Bob, how can you support something like alcohol, beer, and liquor when you see thousands of... And thousands of people becoming alcoholics. And I thought for a moment, gosh, that's right. How can I go out and buy beer and liquor and drink it knowing that I'm supporting something that's bringing me as a people into bondage? How many of you understand that? You see, when you, when, see, that's God working in you. If, if God is not doing nothing in you, you might not be saved. You, you need to understand that it is God working in us. Now that we're his children, he's working in us and changing us from the inside out. And so every day, it is God working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. I remember when I, uh, now Susan was, uh, bless her heart, she just, she's like a rocket. When she, when she accepted Jesus, some people just take off like a rocket. And I mean, they're just, you know, they, they, 
you know, it got to this thing about tithing, you know, tithing. Well, I had a lot of Scotchmen in me. I think all my blood was Scotch. And I was very conservative by nature and, 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 and stingy and, and, and greedy and, and, and selfish. Now, don't pick up no condemnation. I'm just telling you, what, you have to give your testimony. I'm telling you, I'm giving you mine now. But you know what? God began to work in me and work in me. And it is sheer pleasure to give money away now. Let's see if I've got 50 cent here. It's sheer pleasure to give money away. What does the Bible say? Give unto thyself first. Okay. Andy, would you take this $10 bill here? I want to bless you with that $10. See? See? Look, I see her raising her hand over there. Check with your daddy. He's loaded. He'll, he'll get it. <coughs> see, God works on the inside, and now you, you, you want to give. You, you, it's joy to give. It's, it, it's, I can't understand it. I'm, I'm scared. I give everything away. And you're, and you're set free. It's, it's awesome. But see, God had to do that work. Because I'm telling you, when I walked, I squeaked. <laughs> but you know, when God, in about a year, you know, God dealt with me with the, with the liquor, and I gave up the drinking, uh, the smoking. I got the victory over that. I was able to start giving and tithing. And within a couple years, I mean, I was like, wow, God had really done something in me. And it wasn't a religious thing. It was something that God did in me that I got great joy of pleasing him. You know, when you love people, there's a, something in you that you want to please them. It, it, is that not true? It, and you see that. So when somebody comes and you do win somebody to the Lord, they're just not going to be perfect like you are right away. Because it took you a little while, didn't it? Huh? It took you a little while, sure. So you've got to be patient with them. And, uh, and, don't, and don't just, you know, if they, if they still got the habit of smoking and drinking, don't, don't jump down their back, you know, and, well, you are not drinking. You are, quit smoking. You're smoking up the house. What's, I'm, who, who. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit... You pray for them, you bless them, and watch God do the work in them. I love it. 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 It strengthens my faith when I see. Now, my dad, I, you, oh, he was a rascal. He was really a rascal. The time's going by so fast. And he was an alcoholic. And God gave me the privilege to win my dad to the Lord. And I'm telling you, he turned 180 degrees. Notice this. He never touched a drop of liquor after he got saved. The only one thing that he had was smoking up cigars. And every time we'd come over and visit him, my three girls, would, after we'd be going home, she said, you know, I love Grandpa, but he smokes those cigars and my hair is full of, you know, I go to school tomorrow and I'll smell like cigars, you know. And uh, but we prayed. I said, well, we'll pray for Grandpa, you know. And finally he gave up his, his uh, cigars, and he, he lived to be 82 years old. And the last 30 years of his life, he became a deacon in the, in the, in the uh, Pierpont Baptist Church. You could not find a man of God, that, and everybody loved Dad. And you think, I got a sense of humor. My dad had a sense of humor that I'm telling you, he just, it was just awesome. But everybody that, that got around Dad just fell in love. And the women loved to feel his complexion. He had such beautiful, soft complexion. Seriously, he's 82 years old, and the young woman's up here. Mr. Children, you're awesome, you know, wow. And, of course, Mom, you know, she was... Uh, Cool, 
she kept it cool. But we'd laugh at that, you know, and we'd all laugh at that. He's like me, he's har- he was harmless, you know. But to see somebody not only saved, but to see how God does that sanctifying work in them by the Spirit of God. And you have, that's why you have to have that patience. And, and you may have a husband or a wife tonight, and they, they're, they're saved, but they got some areas that ain't too sanctified. You know what I mean? And I, how many know what I mean? Uh, okay, you know what I mean. Just be patient, because there's probably a few areas in your life that's not quite sanctified yet. Okay. Bob, you got every area in your life sanctified. Ask Susan. But let me talk to her first. (laughs) But see, that is a process. Being born again. Boy, when you repent and receive Christ, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you confess him with your mouth, the Holy Spirit causes your spirit to be born again right there and then. If you die right after that, you'd go to heaven. But you're going to live. Now God, the Holy Spirit, will do a sanctifying work in you. Remember we, uh, we put uh, 1 Peter 3, 9 up on the board. Remember that? Let's put that up on the board real quick right now. 1 Peter 3, 3, 9. This is another powerful scripture that uh, will help you to really get sanctified. How many uh, in here is driving down the road and a car pulls out in front of you? Uh, Ron, what, what do you say to that person? Mike, what do you say? You're good, sir. <laughs> All right, let's read this scripture. All right, never return evil for evil. Now he's talking to Christian folk here. Or insult for insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, happiness, and protection, and truly pitying and loving them. For know that to this you have been called that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God, that you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection. So, when somebody pulls out in front of me, I I just bless them. Now, what happens when I bless them? God's going to bless me. Your husband says something bad to you, you say, I bless you, and God's going to bless you. We were talking, Susan was talking to one of our great-grandchildren, and she works at this place, and people can be very rude. Of course, I I mean, I know there's nobody like that here, but she works at uh, one of these, um, the restaurants, you know. And uh, she's she's got a real sensitive spirit. She she loves the Lord, and, and somebody, sometimes it can be real rough, you know. She's waiting on them, and they're snapping out of hurry up. I'm in a hurry, you know, and it, it sort of hurts her, you know, and Susan was talking on the phone, and, and she just has to toughen up a little bit, you know. But uh, she said, now, she said, now just bless that person. Now, isn't that amazing? But think about what you sow, fill it in. What you sow, you what? You reap. So if you sow cursing back, you're going to be cursed. Hello? People come to me and say, well, I don't want to have all these problems. How are you treating people? How, are you loving people? Are you blessing people? Well, uh, once in a while I'll bless them, but most of the time I'll curse them. Well, we've got to change that behavior pattern because all you're doing is just bringing all these curses to you and your family. Hello? See, God's word is true. So you learn to bless people. Somebody bless you out. Ron, somebody bless you out. What would you do? Thank you. Okay, what would you do if somebody bless you out? No comment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> boy, I put people on the spot. See, I know her hesitation. She, she didn't want to lie, but anyway. Hey, but, but you're getting there. You, she, you're getting there. Okay. 
How many, you used to really, I mean, if they blessed you out, you'd let them know in a moment. Huh? How many would let them just like, just like you'd crawl on top of them like a, they were a rattlesnake? You'd beat them to death. But how many have now just bless, bless you, bless you, bless you. I've had someone one time in church told me to go to hell. I said, no, I'm going to heaven. Bless you. you so I've had people call over my phone and tell me how horrible I am as a pastor. I'd bless them. After I tore the telephone up, I'd bless them. But what is that little thing in you? Man, you just, oh, if you could get your hand around their throat, huh? How many? You beat them to death, then repent, right? Yeah, uh huh. But see, we have to learn, we have to learn to bless people. Now, everybody, look, make sure you see that. Now, when people turn you down and you're trying to win them to Christ, they can say, you, you're just a big religious nut. That's what you are. You think you better than I am, don't you? Because you saved, huh? And, oh, and you say, I don't think I'll witness anymore. <laughs> you know, have your shield of faith on. <laughs> Amen. So you've got to be tough. You say, brother, I love you. Well, I don't even believe there's a God. That's your problem. I mean, you know, that's what you want to believe. But I've got some good news for you. Jesus loves you anyway. See, you know what to say. You don't get offended anymore. You bless them. You bless them. You bless them. And see, a lot of times people just have bad habits. Good folks, but just bad habits. Just got to break those old bad habits. How many of you know life and death is in the power of the tongue? Hmm? Yeah. So you learn to bless. You learn to bless. Now I need a volunteer, somebody that I'm going to win to Christ. I'm going to show you how to win somebody to Christ. I have about 15 more minutes here. Who's going to volunteer? All right. Here, here's a sister. She's, she's standing on the corner. Now, <laughs> she's standing on the corner, and I'm coming up. Now, in, on this particular, uh, you are, the Lord's been working with you. You've had a lot of people praying for you, and God's got you ready. And you're ready to accept Jesus. <laughs> But you're really, really, but you're mad inside because you're under conviction. And I come up and I say, good evening, sister. How are you? My name's Pastor Bob. I'm glad to meet you. Glad to meet you. Uh, have you ever heard about Jesus Christ down on the cross for you? I have, but I got so much problem I can't think about that right now. Is that right? But you know what the Bible says? If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All your, yeah, I don't care how many problems you got right now. I don't, I don't care how bad you feel about yourself. If you believe that Jesus Christ died on that old rugged cross for you and shed his blood for you, you can be saved right now. Would you like to be saved right now? Yes, but that's all. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work enough to get saved. But if you repent of your sins and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will move on you and quicken your inner man and you'll be born again and you will become a child of God and your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Would you like to receive Christ right now? repent that means change that means change now the holy spirit will help you to change, been trying to change all well the that's the problem you've been trying and now you need someone that knows how to conquer the world the flesh and the devil and his name is jesus and when you receive him into your heart his holy spirit will come into you and give you power to overcome your husband and your neighbors ready <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that deal right now. <laughs> Are you ready to receive Jesus? I'm ready to receive All right, him. repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. And I repent. 
And I repent. And I receive Jesus. And I receive Jesus into my heart. Into my heart. Right now. Right now. I confess him. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. And I believe. And I believe in my heart. In my heart that God raised him from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. And you said in your word. And you said in your word. I'd be saved. I would be saved. I receive my salvation. I receive my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's simple and it's not complicated. I, I remember I remember one time, and there's different ways you, you can do it. Okay. Now what was that simple? But you just gotta be bold. And if they reject, they're not rejecting you. You know, now you don't want to do it in front of them, but you knock the dust off your feet and you go to the next town, right? You go to the next person. But see, there are people out there now. You'll see, when you start witnessing and say, God, I, I'm putting myself on the foreign line and I want to be a soul winner today. And Lord, I ask today that you would lead somebody across my path that I can share Jesus with, okay? Now, sometimes you can share your own testimony to that person and how you got saved and then ask them the question, would you like to become a Christian today? Now, it's the Holy Spirit that's doing that work in them, remember, some of us plant, some of us water, but who gives the increase? God. You don't have to worry about trying to save them. I can't save them. You can't save them. Our job is just share the gospel with them, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord. All right, uh, Mike, would you come up here? <coughs> I'm volunteering, Mike. <clears throat> For, uh, there was a period of time when I would bring people right up to a point this particular guy worked out at the air base where I worked. His name was Jack McGee. And uh, when I talked with this pastor, I said, you know, I bring people right up to the point, uh, and I share the gospel with them and everything, and bring them up to the point, but I never can get them to receive Christ. See, people, you've got to get people to respond. Now listen to what I just said. You've got to get people to respond to receive the message. To receive the Savior. You can bring them, I brought people up to that point, but I never was able to move them to respond to receive the Lord, to get saved. You, you follow me? Okay. And so this is what happened. And, and, and you're Jack McGee. And God's been dealing with you and everything. And I've been witness and I'm come by your house. And I went by Jack McGee's house. And I said, Jack, I've come by to get a commitment out of you today. Now, you know, I told you that Jesus Christ died on that cross for you, and I told you what the Bible says. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, watch what I'm going to do. If you want to receive him now as your Lord and Savior, signify it by taking my hand. Notice that, all right? Now, don't, don't grab it quick. I put out my hand. No, all right, no, not yet, not yet. All right, not yet. All right. <laughs> all right, I got my hand out, okay? Now, what am I doing? I'm moving him to respond. He either got to reject my hand or he's got to grab it. I said, if you really want to receive Christ, signify it by taking my hand. All right. And when he touched my hand, we both went to the ground, boom, to the floor, under the power of God, and the Holy Spirit came down, and he received Christ into his heart and became a child of God. So remember that. Now, let's just say that Jack said, no, I'm not ready, you know. I said, well, I want you to know I've shared the gospel with you. You know how to get saved. And Jack, I love you. If you never accept Jesus, I, I always love you. God loves you, but you know the way, now you know the truth, and you're going to have to respond one day if you want to get saved. And what you do, you try to leave the person with a good, with a good atmosphere, you know, and say, I'll be praying for you, Jack. Say, let's say that he didn't accept Christ. I'll be praying for you. Remember, if you need me, I'll be around, okay? And then you leave. But you've done what you're supposed to do. You 
cause that person to respond, either to reject or to accept. And by putting out your hand, he either is going to respond to it, and it's very powerful, very powerful way to do it, or he's going to reject. If he does, bring your hand back and say, Jack, I love you, and I'll be praying for you. You know how to get saved. I believe God has continued to work with you, and you're going to give your life to Christ. So what an experience. Now, you will experience. I've got about five minutes. I'll close down. Everybody got this little sheet. On the back of it, you'll see, you'll see what the Bible says at the back. It gives it the direction of the shield of faith. And once they get saved, if they live in the community, then you need to make sure, look at the, look at the bottom part there on the right-hand side. Of, it, says, uh, it talks about what to pray for, what to pray. And then down you'll see... Uh, if they've trusted the Lord, here's what you want to try to encourage them. Try to encourage them to read their Bible every day to get to know Jesus Christ better. And, you know, that is so important that as we uh, spend our time reading the Bible, I encourage you to start with the book of Ephesians and read a chapter. The next day, read, it. read that whole book, and, the, and then when you read that whole book in that one week, go back over it again and again. And again, and it'll start coming alive to you. It'll feed you because Jesus said, my word is spirit and life. And look at, look at what it says. Number two, talk to God in prayer every day. That's what prayer is. You don't have to stand there like this. I mean, you can have your eyes open and pray. And you, and you talk with God. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you that you love me and I love you and I need help in this particular area, Lord, and I pray that you would help me. Uh, I've been praying that, for example, my sense of humor. I say, Lord, I know sometimes uh, I uh, get a little carried away and Frank tonight really, really blew us out of the, out of the saddle. Talked about uh, Joshua. As far as me and my house goes, we, we, shoo, we shoo to serve the Lord. Now, who couldn't laugh at that, you know? We shoo to serve the Lord. Sometimes your mouth sticks, you know. You, you can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, I pray, God, help me with my sense of humor. As I know sometimes people think, well, he's not serious. I am dead serious about this. I am dead serious. But see, that is something that, that is Bob Tilton, and it leaks out in my message and my, in, in my teaching. And sometimes people like that better than my message. Anyway, but uh, how many of you know laughter is better than? Oh, you haven't had no castor oil lately? You take some castor oil, and when you hear me uh, say that, that, that laughter is better than a medicine, you, and castor oil will hit your brain, and you'll say, amen, brother, amen. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Huh? Yeah, you say, I can't run very fast. You take some castor oil. You'll be running fast, I'll tell you that. <laughs> See my sense of humor? I, mean, I can't. <laughs> All right, remember, though, as far as me and my house goes, we're going to chew the Lord. Choose the Lord. Okay. All right. All right. So you want to encourage them to talk to God in prayer every day and then be water baptized. You're not saved by water baptism, but that's another teaching. Fellowship and uh, worship and fellowship and serve with other Christians in a church where Christ is preached. And the Bible is the final authority. Tell others about Jesus Christ. Share your own testimony. Your, your own testimony is a tremendous tool for winning people to Christ. When God saved you, how do you feel about God? Share that with people. And I'll tell you what, your faith will be energized by acknowledging all the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus. How many of you know that's on the scripture sheets? Your faith will be energized as you share Christ with other people. Don't fear that they might reject the message. That's not your concern. Just share what you can with people. Sometimes you just have to share a little bit here and a little bit there, a little bit here and a little bit there. And if they don't want to accept it, God will not even force them. But it is God's will that no man perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, when uh, 
people uh, bring things to the house, uh, like uh, we have um, UPS comes. They'll get, they'll, I have, we have a track, we have DVDs, we have CDs, we have things like this, and we give, we give them to these people. They come to the door, they give us something, we give them something. So have it ready. Be, re, be ready in season and out of season. And it is such a joy. How many tracks? You know, with our, we're on the website now, and this, of course, the blue sheets are on the website also. And people can connect onto that. But uh, we've been on the website probably a year and a half, a little less than a year and a half, something like that. And so far we've had 3,303 people that have listened to the messages that uh, our teachers here have, have, uh, have taught. Now remember, we're all a part of that. So if, if I win somebody, if God uses me to win somebody to Christ, you're a part of that because we're all one body and we all function in our gifts and we're all working at this together to reach people for Christ. So we can always remember, remember that. We are a team. We are all members of the one body of Christ. And uh, so just remember that. So you got your sheets, look them over. That's all the time we have. Let's pray. Father, we pray right now that the Spirit of God would move upon our hearts to lead somebody across our path this week that we can share the gospel with, to share Christ with. We pray that now as we go out from this place, rejoicing in you. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.